Welcome to Circus Circus. In this video, I'm gonna take you inside one of the most belittled, beaten down, and verbally abused hotels in all of Las Vegas. And I'm gonna see if I can make a case for why it's the best hotel in Las Vegas, but more specifically, who it is the best for. Coming to you on the 33rd floor of the Circus Circus Hotel and Casino. I booked a room here. This is the West Tower Double Queen Room. I was able to get this on a weekday for $39.55 directly through Circus Circus website, plus $33 resort fee, other taxes, other fees, just over $82 to be in this room. It's 364 square feet in total. This building has been around since 1968, and some of it is a little bit dated. They do have some more modern furniture than I expected, but you will notice certain parts of this room could use an upgrade. Now, they also come with a 32-inch screen TV. If you would like to have a refrigerator in here, a mini fridge, it is gonna be an extra $25 a night. If you need a crib for your children, it's an extra $25 a night as well. Also, there's not a separate actual closet like you may see at some other hotels here in the Vegas area. It's just an open area with hangers. And then you step into the bathroom area here. This is nothing really fancy. And one thing to know is when you do book your room here at Circus Circus, the two towers they have here on the main part of the property are where they book everyone first. The manor that they have across the street, they only use that when they have overflow or when the main property gets too full. Now, if you're gonna be taking public transportation when you're here in Las Vegas and you need to ride the Deuce bus, over here at Circus Circus, you come right in front of the Slots of Fun, you buy your tickets right here, and the bus stop is truly right here in front of Circus Circus, so you can hop on and hop off to get where you need to get to on your vacation. Boy, it best be well. And though deep down, I know I might be headed for teardrops. Now that you got me started, I just... All right, guys, we made it inside from the main entrance. That's where taxis will pick you up and drop you off, as well as Uber and Lyft. Now, in the back, there's another taxi and drop-off for them only, right next to the registration desk. See so a front and back pick up and drop off. This is the main casino floor. If you want to get your Players Club card, right here next to the main entrance when you come on in. They've got coin slots just around the corner here. Upstairs, they have the Midway with all kinds of fun and games. Fun fact, this is the only casino in Vegas that has a rotating slot area. If you come here and you look at this, you can tell it's pretty obvious this used to be a carousel, but carousel gone, slot machines in place now. It does rotate, but very, very slowly. So unless you're really hammered, you shouldn't have an issue falling over. After you check in at the registration desk here at the back of the hotel property, you're gonna come down this corridor where you're gonna go right by the food court, you're going to go right by the West Casino, and if you keep going down this corridor here, you'll eventually get to the main casino and the main entrance that face Las Vegas Boulevard. Truly just around the corner from the check-in desk, they do have the food court here where you have numerous options to get food to eat. So you can bring the whole family. They can all go and choose what they want. You're not gonna find any unique places to eat here. These are all typical spots you will find in other locations outside of Vegas. But nonetheless, if you're trying to get people fed. If you got picky eaters, bring them here, let them choose what they want and enjoy. Unfortunately, the buffet is closed today when I am here. The schedule online shows that they are closed Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday completely. So they're only open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. On the weekends, they have breakfast and they also have dinner time. Now, coming here, this is not gonna be your high end buffet. You've probably seen other content telling you how not good the buffet is here. You're gonna find stuff here that's like corn dogs they have, okay? And items like that that are more geared towards kids because this is a property that caters towards family. So yes, they have the buffet, but it's not gonna be high end like some other places. It's going to be geared towards the little ones. 
If you come to Circus Circus on the weekend, they have something cool they do in the Adventure Dome. So this is where at nighttime, they bring the lights down inside the Adventure Dome and they do neon rides, games, and face painting. Absolutely perfect if you're coming to Vegas with your little kids. If you guys want to get married here at the Circus Circus Wedding Chapel, I just found out that you can get married here for as cheap as $149. There's your budget option. The steakhouse here at Circus Circus is called just that, the steakhouse. Now what's unique about this place is despite so much of the attention you'll see towards Circus Circus for negativity towards its property and the quality of the place, this is one of the most highly regarded steakhouses in all of Las Vegas. If you wanna have a very high end, very professional, quality steak when you come to Las Vegas, this is an incredibly popular spot. Once you come through the doors here, you're going to notice an incredibly classic Vegas feel inside this steakhouse. They have a good amount of seating available, they have a bar top, they have booths, they have tables for you, and you talk about a place that has a strong reputation, this steakhouse has not had to hire a new employee in 23 years. You guys know where I'm going. On the second floor here of this part of the property where there are other people in rooms, the place says it's open 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., but obviously that's not the case. You don't use a room key to get in here. I'm not sure how you're supposed to get in here, but it actually looks better than people probably would expect for Circus Circus. They got a good amount of free weight options that actually go up to about 65 pounds. They got some cable machines you can use, so you can probably get a decent workout in while you're here. You can, however, at the end of the hallway here, come and get a 20 ounce soda or water for $3. Upstairs, just above the casino, is the Midway. This is where you are absolutely surrounded by all kinds of fun games for kids and adults. And in the middle of this place, they have the stage where they do performances. The schedule is right here to see Friday through Monday, how often they do shows and the types of shows they do. They have trapeze performances, they have contortionists, they have numerous shows that are different throughout the day when you're here. So it's all kinds of fun for free for you and the kids. All right, guys, it's time to play. I bet you didn't know at Circus Circus, you can play air hockey against yourself. The game ended in a six to six tie against myself. So, looks like I win, but also lose at the same time. I'll take it. I got invaded. They got me. What did I do? 
There we yeah. go, that one. Only one? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's it? It's just literally one gate, one ball? Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, hopefully it stays in. Shoot. But 20 credits for one ball. So one ball is $2. So two bucks, here it goes. I thought you were done. I tried. <laughs> $2 well spent. <laughs> Right next to the casino floor at Circus Circus is a spot called Midway Land. This is separate from the Midway upstairs. Down here, it's a more tucked away spot where they do have games, they do have fun things you can do with your kids, but it's great because it's not as busy and it's not as crowded. So if you still wanna have a fun time as a family, but not be clustered upstairs with everybody else on the second level, come down here to Midway Land and you'll have more things to do just by yourself and have more fun on your own. If you're a parent, here with your kids at Circus Circus, I'm gonna show you one of the most important places you're gonna to need to know about. Right here, because you got little ones, there's a good chance they're gonna lose something. I got a very simple burger and fries. Burger was $12.95 plus a dollar for cheese, and this water was five bucks for 20 ounces. They also have eight ounce waters that are a dollar a piece, but I wanted to show you guys how expensive it is. Burger from Big Top East for $12.95 was actually juicier than I thought it was going to be. So it was a decent burger, but between the burger, between this water, just over 20 bucks, you're absolutely going to be paying strip prices for the food. The fries were just standard fries. They weren't great, they weren't terrible, they were just decent and they did the trick. So you're going to be paying those kinds of high prices even here at Circus Circus. The good news though at Big Top Eats is you have this menu here on the wall they show. It's their $7.77 special menu. So you have things like French toast, hot dog, grilled cheese, pancakes, uh, breakfast biscuit, and then a half a pizza that you can order there. So they do have some things that are more affordable. They are open 24 hours a day, so you can go there anytime to get any food item on the menu 24 hours a day. This old mailbox right here goes perfectly with the age of this property. Lots of people don't realize that Circus Circus was built and opened in 1968. This property is decades old. It does have mafia ties to no one's surprise. However, it was owned by MGM Resorts for many years until recently Phil Ruffin bought it and has put tens of millions of dollars into renovating this property. The other cool thing about this is because since the Circus Circus has been around for so long, you've probably seen it featured before or depicted in numerous movies about Las Vegas. The Flying Palacio! Come on in everybody, check out Slots of Fun. Ever since COVID, Slots of Fun has really never come back to what it used to be. If you guys have been here years ago, you probably remember there used to be food choices right here. There were snacks and drinks you could buy. This whole wall here would be full of people actually gambling and spending their money. But now, Slots of Fun here at the north end of the Strip is damn near a ghost town. Nope. I thought they had slots on there. They don't. We are now on the second floor of the property, which is the promenade. Up here, you do have a handful of shops and a handful of amenities and things you can do, but the main one, without a doubt, is the Adventure Dome. This is free to go into, but you do have to pay for the rides. 
The weekends are when they're more flexible with their hours. The weekdays are when they're either closed or they have a limited amount of hours that they are open. We have made it to the end of the second floor of the promenade. Now, this area up here actually used to be a casino, and according to Circus Circus's own map, this was the Skyrise Casino. That is now gone, if you cannot tell. Now, what they have over here is a walkway that takes you to the manor, the RV park, and the pool. Lots of people don't realize that Circus Circus actually has their own water park connected to the RV park. Also over there, they have a dog park. Not just a dog relief area, but a dog park with fun things for your dog to do. No kidding, huh? I'm gonna do an entirely separate video on the pros and cons of staying here at Circus Circus, but I'll name a few. Then we'll get into a bad situation I ran into here just before checking out, and then we'll do the employee shout outs. One of the first pros I notice about this place here at Circus Circus, it's cool, is they actually have an agreement with a uh, transportation company where you get a ride to and from each way. It's $15 a flat fee that you can from the airport. So it's cheaper than the flat rate taxi. And when I looked on Uber, it was cheaper than the Uber price. So the front desk here, they can help you set that up or the information desk can, but that was cool. Another thing was the furniture in the room was actually like the tabletops and countertops, a little bit nicer than I thought I was gonna get when I came into the room initially. Another thing here that's good that I noticed, their security presence, they have both unarmed and armed security. Seems to be a little bit heavier here than at other places. And we'll talk about why that is in just a moment. A few of the cons of staying here are one, the north end of the strip here is known for being a rough area, which is probably part of the reason they have more noticeable security presence here. Uh, you know, that's just how the area is. That's why if you go inside, you'll see at the registration desk, I noticed that some of the restaurants, their credit card machines actually have a uh, cable holding them down because I talked to the employees while I'm here and you know, one said they've had problems with people stealing them. Two, another person said they had a guy get so angry one time that he you know, grabbed the credit card machine, slammed it down. Also, there are gonna be more homeless people in this area. Just before I filmed this, I watched a homeless guy who walked by, a family who was just trying to unload their stuff from their vehicle and he stops and just staring at them. That is more likely to happen here at the north end of the strip. The $33 resort fee that a lot of people hate, they definitely have that here. And we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. Also, they don't give you a booklet when you check in here of like coupons or discounts or anything like that. Like the Strat does that, downtown El Cortez will do that. Also, you sign up for the player's card. They had no promotions that the woman told me about for anything. No free play, um, no anything when you sign up for a player's card. Also, the room, wallpaper was peeling off in the place, but a property as old as this, you kind of expect that sort of thing. And the other thing here too is they seem to have a lot of timeshare salespeople in this place. Both entrances on the ground level and the moment you go upstairs to like the Adventure Dome, man, they have numerous timeshare salespeople here. Just, you know, obviously trying to approach anyone who looks like a couple or a couple with kids coming in. So they seem to push the timeshare sales thing pretty hard at this property. Making this video was actually a little nostalgic for me because when I was a kid and the first time I ever came to Las Vegas, like many of you probably, our family came on a vacation and we stayed here at Circus Circus. Back when Wet n Wild used to be across the street, back when they used to run that like show on the TV of like the detectives that were clowns trying to find this other guy. And they found him like the steakhouse trying to eat steak with a spoon. Like I remember that from when I was a kid. This was my first Vegas experience ever. And the day I get here, obviously when I'm in the room, I do what I can to film that quickly, give you guys a good chunk of information about it, and then head downstairs to show you guys most of the rest of the property, because that's what most of the video is about, is the amenities that the place has outside the room. Now, the stay was going okay until the morning I was checking out, and I came back to my room after exercising. In the morning was the first time I needed to sit down to use the toilet in my bathroom. There were two small marks on the toilet that I had noticed the night before on the seat, but I initially thought they were just from wear and tear because this property was built back in the 60s. Well, I looked a little closer, and at that point, I was not sure if those were marks from wear and tear or if those were marks left from someone else. So I wetted some toilet paper, went to see if I could wipe them off, and they wiped off. Now, I still have to go to the bathroom. 
So I've used some dirty public restrooms before or been out in nature or situations where there's no bathroom nearby. And you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta make do with the best situation you have. But I'm still sweaty at this point. I still need to shower and I'm like, okay, let me just shower and just get the heck out of here. When I go to get in the shower, I'm going to step in there. I'm gonna reach for the handle to turn the water on. And I notice that on the faucet, there is one really long hair hanging from it that was clearly not mine. I thought that was gross too, but in my head, I'm like, okay, it's just one hair, remove it, shower, clean, and just go. Once I'm in the shower with the water running, I look and I notice there's several more hairs. After that, I get out of the shower, and now I am really cautious and really attentive to anything else in this bathroom that might also be dirty, which led me to see another brown stain that was small on the floor, and that was also one that I was able to wipe up, and in wiping that up, that allowed me to see what was probably the most disgusting thing I have ever seen in a Vegas hotel room. The lower part of that toilet had so much brown on it that I could hardly believe it. And that was wipeable as well, which means it was left behind by someone else. All of this happened in the last hour and 15 minutes I had before checkout. Checkout was at 11 a.m., so after cleaning up, I pack up my stuff, I come down to the front desk to let them know because I had a less serious situation years ago in a room, and when I was checking out, I just let someone at the front desk know that, hey, just wanna let you know that you know there's this issue, there was this issue in my room, it was okay, but I just wanna give you a heads up, and they immediately waived the resort fee, which I did not expect at all in that situation. Now, I know some people are hesitant to speak up about something because it can feel uncomfortable. I think that most people, myself included, even if a room is not pristine, but if it's clean, you got four walls, you got a roof over your head, and you got a comfortable bed to sleep in, people are probably gonna be okay with that because it's gonna do the trick. Where I think you lose a lot of people is when you have sanitation issues like I experienced. So if you're into an issue like that with your stay here in Vegas or anywhere, speak up. Let the manager know because any good manager is going to want to know about that problem so they can fix it so that other customers who come in the future can have a better experience. So the supervisor that did speak to me down here did apologize. She was courteous. She said I should not have had to deal with that. She asked me to describe the issue and I just showed her the footage because I have it on my phone. And she said, okay, well, it looks like a little smudge, which there was nothing little about it. But she said, we are going to have professional cleaners go in and handle it. Now, I still left $5 for housekeeping as a tip, and I generally encourage other people to do that as well, because housekeepers typically have very little interaction with guests, the work is not glamorous, and they're often forgotten about. But I'm also as human as anyone else, and I definitely had second thoughts about leaving a tip at all. But I also know that rooms can get cleaned by different staff from day to day, and the $5 tip I left is whoever comes to clean the room to clean up after me. Now that person, unfortunately, is also gonna to have to pick up the slack for their coworker who did not do a good job. But in my head, I was really trying to think about not trying to punish someone else for the bad work that another person did, because that happens sometimes in hospitality. I've been there before where someone else, your coworker messes up, then that problem basically now becomes your problem. So I really tried to keep that in mind, and that was why I still left five bucks for the housekeeper. At the registration desk, I let the supervisor know what happened, but I purposely did not suggest anything for them to do, because I just wanted to see what they would say on their own. Now, the beauty of this, for those of you watching, is when I do these videos and I get to have these experiences and share them with you, you basically get to get a better sense of what you can potentially expect when you come to stay at one of these properties so you have the best information possible to make the best decision for your own vacation. Now, the supervisor did offer me to stay later, like if I want an extended checkout, which I said thanks, but no thanks. I mean, because I live here, actually, I had to run. I'm actually filming this the day after the stay. She also offered if I wanted to stay another night, Again, you know, I live here, so no, it was not of interest to me. And also I offered to say, hey, well, if you want to come back in the future, email me, you know, I'll just give you an upgrade to one of our better suites. Again, I don't plan to come back anytime soon to stay here, so none of that was really that appealing to me. So after offering that and then offering nothing else, I said, well, will they just be willing to waive the resort fee? So I made that suggestion, and she says, well, we really don't do that here. She says, but I'll tell you what, I'll give you $10 off the price of the room. So that was what I got was $10 off of the price of the room. That response did surprise me. So their supervisors here may be really limited in what they can offer people if where there's an issue like that. But I'm thinking, is it really worth it to a multi-billion dollar property to keep the $33 from the resort fee? 
So like I said, surprise me, wasn't upset, wasn't irritated or anything because you know, when I do these videos and I stay here, this is my business, so I'm able to write off the entire price of the stay. I was curious what could happen because I want you to know what you might be able to expect. Well, <laughs> the irony in this whole thing is that the point of this video was about why Circus Circus is the best place to stay on the strip. Because you could argue that any hotel is the best for someone. Now this property obviously caters to families. They want to be known as being the best place for families. So the point of the video was to try to counteract all of the negative reviews, all the bad things people say online, all the negative videos about this place. but. They ended up proving all those negative reviews right. But the whole thing just kind of came full circle. I get all these bad reviews. I'm trying to show something different and it came back to just being bad again. So I was trying to help the place, but oh man, no. <laughs> okay, let's do some employee shout outs. Ron at the Steakhouse, awesome dude. Been there for years. He's doing a great job managing that place. They're a very well-known, very popular steakhouse here inside Circus Circus. If you've never been, it is popular. People will tell you. MG in the chapel, she was great. She was the manager up at the chapel. She let me go in there and take a look around so I could share with you guys. Marco, who works at Big Top Eats, Marco was super cool. He was a, uh, he gave great customer service, friendly dude to chat with. And at the front desk for registration, Trina. T R I N A Trina. She was here when I checked in. She was so polite, so courteous, so warm and welcoming. She was amazing. She asked if I wanted a lower floor or a higher floor. I said higher. She gave it to me. I gave her 20 bucks uh, as a tip afterwards. She was very appreciative. And when I came to check out, I waited in line just to see her. I let other people go ahead of me to see other agents just to see her. Again, she went, grabbed the supervisor. Again, super courteous, apologetic. And at the end of the whole thing, I gave her another 20. Trina, by herself, helped salvage this situation. So if you ever come to your circus circus, say hi to Trina at the front. As disgusting as the bathroom situation was, I will say this about the property, the room itself was adequate. The room itself was adequate. They obviously have some entertainment options here that are good for families, so particularly the Adventure Dome, the Midway, the free circus acts, the acrobat shows and that sort of thing. So you can enjoy gambling, you can enjoy the steakhouse, even if you're not going to stay here. The owner, Phil Ruffin, is investing tens of millions of dollars into renovating the property to try to make improvements so that people can have a better experience when they come here. So they are definitely working on that. They're definitely working to get this place going in the right direction. So who knows? Maybe I'll have to come back in the future. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to follow me for the best Vegas info. That is it for this video. I am Jacob, and this is my life in Vegas.